Welcome to the Property Gurus. This video today is focused on built-in storage and usable space that is often lost and wasted when you're doing a project or development. The videos you can see here are just some highlights that we will show you at the end of the video of what we achieved in a recent loft conversion. But as you'll see, we managed to, to create a built-in wardrobe with three sizable shelves above it, a study stroke dressing room area that you can see here that could have potentially been wasted lost space, a really big eaves storage cupboard, and we'll go into the design details later in terms of making sure that this feels part of the room and that it's easy to use and easy to keep clean and tidy and won't get damaged. And also in the shower area, we created some significant storage space, even though it was a relatively small room, we only had 1.5 meter depth to deal with, but we still created a lot of usable storage space. You can see a bit here that's above the shower. And in addition to that, we also created a lighting feature and some usable space. So we're the Property Gurus. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Have a look at our channel. There is a lot more detail and much more information in terms of planning and designing and helping you with some ideas for your build. And we hope you enjoy the video. Thanks very much. This will become, this is the end of the room internally. So this will be a vertical wall. We're, in, we're going to put two cupboard doors, one at this end and one at the far end so that we can access the space behind it for storage. So if we have a look through here, uh, you'll be able to get a feel for it. So it's, it's reasonably big area, floor space, about two meters from uh, one side to the other. And it's obviously restricted head height, but there's still a lot of valuable storage space here. So quite often you'll find builders will just close this off. Uh, it's a real shame, real waste if they do that. So if you're doing a loft conversion, make sure that you plan ahead to be able to access all of the storage space once the, the build's complete. In terms of the design, We've got a small alcove here, which would be next to in reduced head height. We thought this would be perfect for a study. You can fit a desk in here or a dressing table. So this will be a sort of two meter by two meter um, alcove space. So in here, we have planned for uh, a plug socket for the desk. So this is the cable has been fed up and the socket will be fitted onto the wall there. Then if we pan across, we've got a cupboard door and then next to that, we fitted a, another plug socket and then pan further across a final plug socket. And the idea here in terms of the planning is that the bed could, the bed head could be situated underneath the two Velux windows and there'll be a power socket either side. So it's important to plan your power sockets when you're stud working everything out. Moves all across the joints to make sure that there's no movement and no cracking. But having a look in our purpose-built cupboard here, you can see that they haven't fitted the board at the end yet, but all the boards have been put down to the bottom. We're going to have a bit of skirting board running across the back section of this angled eaves cupboard. So that's been built up to enable us to be able to put that on there. Uh, and then in, the, in our cubby hole study stroke dressing room area, um, we haven't, it hasn't been done yet. And then we've got our built-in wardrobe which uh, will also be plastered in fully as well. Moving into the ensuite shower room, this room is 1.5 meters deep and we fitted a shower tray that was 1.2 meters, which left us 300 mil gap here. So you can see we framed it out to include some storage above the shower controls. So you can see here, we boxed it all in. We put the plasterboard, the moisture board onto it, created two holes, the bigger one is for storing shampoos and anything you'd want to use in the shower. The one above, which has lighting built into it, is designed for more decorative purposes, to maybe put a plant or just something stylish in there just to make the room more attractive. So you can see we need to plan ahead before we fit out any of the tiles. We built these two uh, cubby holes. So the first one here really is to store all the showers. Pretty deep, this. This is almost uh, 300 mil deep so we can get plenty of 
uh, shampoo and shower gel and anything else that you want to store in there. And then the top one is more decorative. So you can see that we've actually fitted three lights into the top of this. So these are sort of decking lights um, that will illuminate this and we'll put some candles or maybe um, a some fake plants or something in here. So that'll look quite nice. So the shower area is looking pretty good. Then over here, we've now got the vanity unit fitted for the sink. So again, to, to have some extra storage space, we've done um, a free, uh, one that's freestanding. So in here, we've got two storage shelves and you'll see that we've also fitted a decorative bottle trap in here. So we've got the plastic fitting at the back, but the bottle trap looks a bit more attractive. So when you open the cupboard, once you've got your shampoos and bleach and anything else in here, all you'll see is that nice bottle trap. And then above it, it's got a pretty stylish, this is a resin sink. Everything's been done, we've got our design. This is the, what could be a small workspace area or a dressing table area. We've got setback, which would be dead space normally. Sometimes these are used at the top of stairwells for a, a little landing, but we thought it would be better having it in the room. Um, people are working from home more these days, so it's a potential workspace, um, really useful little space. I mean, we could make it into fitted cupboards, but we didn't want to. Uh, next to that, we've got the built-in wardrobe, so that's been built. The landing, where the top of the stairs finishes, you have to have a minimum of 850 millimeters, uh, just to, for safety measures for building control. So we thought that because the doorway had to come that far forward, this space was going to be lost, so making it into uh, a wardrobe is ideal. So we will have a hanging rail sort of across the middle piece here and then put three shelves above that. Um, we have some nice doors and it's got a bit of extra height inside, so it'd be useful space. So you can see all the dark patches on the walls here is where it's it's not dry yet and this cupboard space is not dry. Also, if you look through here now, we've all, we've we're waiting for all of this to dry, so this is still going to be another couple of days probably before we can paint. But if you look inside this eaves cupboard, you can see that we've now plastered the underside of the eaves and the corners of the cupboards. Most of the time people don't do this, they leave it like this, which this board is not visible so it doesn't matter. But it's uh, a much better finish if you can get your plasterer to actually crawl in there and plaster it. It is a bit of a pain for them, but definitely worth it. But if we put a layer of uh, new oil on the top, firstly, uh, it will help with the colour, but secondly, it also protects it. So this sort of floor, uh, you're meant to oil it once a year just to keep it looking rich, stop it drying out, make sure that it still has all the properties that you want. So the other thing we're doing in here, which again is a really nice touch if you're doing your loft, is to make sure you put the flooring into all of your cupboards and cubby holes. Because there's nothing worse, if you're trying to store something in here, like this paint, for example, and you try and push it in and it's, there's no wooden floor in here, it will drop down and then it becomes more of a pain to bring things in and out. And also, it just looks more professional. So if you look down there where there's no flooring, that looks a bit disappointing. Whereas here, you open the cupboard and it's all wood and it will look great. And that's really going to set this apart. So we've got it again. You can't see it because it's a real mess at the moment. But this is where our built-in wardrobe is in the room and you'll see you can see just underneath uh, where the spirit level is we've already put the flooring all the way through that so when you open those cupboard doors once we've fitted them then it will look um, you know it's the same level today we're looking at the addition of the skirting boards and the architraves and if you're not familiar with the term architrave is basically a vertical piece of wood like this one you can see here that goes around an opening in the room. So for this one, it's a, a cupboard uh, cover, but uh, it could be for a door frame as well, or uh, a wardrobe. So you can see here, since we last looked at it, we fitted some MDF on the inside. So the brown section is all MDF, which gives it a really nice flush finish when you open the door. And then the architrave itself has been pinned on. So this has all been cut to size perfectly and then pinned on. So you can see, moving over to the built-in wardrobe here, we've got the MDF, which has been fitted slightly further out uh, here so that we can make space for the architrave on the other side. And this has then been screwed into all of the, um, the wall 
from the inside here. These these screw holes will be filled later and then painted over so you won't see them. And then the architrave is cut to size. You have to mitre the corners. So you can see you've got a diagonal cut on all of the corners. So you have two 45 degree cuts which uh, match each other. And then these are then nailed to the walls. Now, one of the things that's absolutely essential for a brilliant finish to make this room look absolutely fantastic is the corking. We'll come back to that in a minute. You can see this section here has already been corked. So that's applying the cork all across the top and the outside edge of all of the architrave and skirting board and then finishing that to give it the, the top end professional finish. And we'll have a look at that in a second. Coming on to the cupboard that we built in, we had a look at this earlier, which was just a hole, then we plastered it. Now we've put the architrave round. Now we've hung these mirror doors and internally, we've utilized as much space as we can. So we've fitted a rail for hanging all your clothes. That's been set at 1.2 meters from the floor. Uh, most clothes drop 900 to a meter. So you'll have some space at the bottom here where to put your shoes and that's why we fitted some wooden flooring. And then we fitted three shelves here. Now we've got a 300 mil rise. You see the top shelf, we've had to cut it back because it's quite high and it's difficult to reach into. All the shelves have been fitted on top of batten. So we've screwed some batten to the wall and then got MDF cut to size. And then we can just drop that in on top of the batten. And you can see here the, the two shelves and then the top shelf is, diff, is invisible. It's uh, set back. So it's the same on both sides. You can see we've started to fill some of the screw holes on the right here where it's gone a bit yellow. That's filled, that will be painted over. So these cupboards have come out quite nicely. So quite a lot of storage space for the for the space that we've built in here. And jumping into the cupboard, as we said in previous videos, this is all about making it a feel, a top end finish. So we've put wooden floor in here and we've now put some skirting board in as well. And you can see we put a larger skirting board because there was a bigger gap because of the eaves. And we fitted some lights in here as well. So it's illuminated. So it's starting to get a real high end finish. We put some skirting board on this side of the wall as well. So let's step into the finished loft room that we've created. And in here, we've been thinking about all the potential storage options. So we've got some eaves storage. We've got a desk area, we'll talk about it later. We've got built-in wardrobe and we've got some other areas that we've done some design on. So just coming over to this wall here, where the stairs arrive in the room, the building regulations in the UK stipulate that you have to have a landing. So this area here between the top step and the door to the room has to be included for safety. When somebody comes up the stairs to make sure that they don't fall back down, you have to have a landing like this. And the minimum is 850 mil. So we we put this round about a meter. Um, so what that's done is it's pushed the door into the room forward and then you've got the conundrum of how do you manage that inside the room? And you could, so we'll close this door over. So we had the option of, we could have just had a wall next to the door and then step this area back, or we could have just squared the whole thing off and lost that space behind the wall. But what we've done is we've taken the opportunity that the 850 mil has given us to build a wardrobe alongside the door. So we've built it to the maximum possible width. So you can see in the corner where the architrave goes, where it touches the sloping ceiling, the eaves to the front of the house. We've maximized the space to create this wardrobe. And we've then put a mirror on it, which gives the impression that it's twice the size. So the room, when you look around the room, if you look into that part, it looks, it gives you the impression that the room's twice as big. So it's quite a nice idea for you to, um, to just make it feel more spacious. We've put the sliding doors on. So let's, and that really is, is one of the reasons for that is that it's easier to access and you don't have to worry about the door of the wardrobe clashing with the door into the room or clashing with the cupboard doors or hitting your bed or any of those things. So we put a sliding door on. So let's have a look inside and what we've done inside the actual cupboard itself. So, first thing we've done is we've installed a hanging rail, which is at 1.2 meters from the floor. 
Most clothes hang down somewhere in the region of a meter. So that will give us about 200 millimeters at the bottom here, where we could store shoes or boxes or anything else that you like to put underneath your clothes. So we've got hanging rail, double hanging rail. You can see that it's uh, the full width right the way across. And then above that, we've installed some shelves. So we've made these 300 mil high, which is plenty high enough to be able to, to stack jumpers or jeans or you know t-shirts or whatever it is that you're looking to store. So we've got two of those shelves. But as you can see, the ceiling height is actually higher than the two shelves. So what we've done, we've actually done a third shelf, a concealed shelf. It's stepped back so that you can access it. So this shelf is about two thirds of the width of the other two shelves, but it's stepped back. And then you can see inside that the ceiling is, it does have a slight curvature to it. So, so you can see the curvature here, but you've got most of the space is usable. When you step back, you can't actually see that shelf. It is a concealed hidden shelf, but it's just maximizing the internal storage, making that, put, this part here above is now being used for storage rather than dead space. And what you want to avoid is dead space in your loft. It is criminal if you don't use every single square inch. So then we had a, an issue as to what do we do with this part in the corner? Now, this part in the corner, the, the bit behind the wardrobe here is actually is where the staircase is. So if we step out into the stairs, you can see down here that the, behind the wardrobe, this part of the wall here, is actually the space above the stairs. So we couldn't do anything with that. But the back wall, so this section next to the wardrobe is full, is full depth. So that goes all the way to the end of the house, the side of the house. So it's, it's, it's a lot deeper. If you look at the wardrobe, which is only about 800 deep, this part here is uh, more than two meters deep. So the question was, what do we do with that? Now we could have carried the wardrobe across and just had some more storage next to it, more shelves and, um, and, and more storage. But that would have been a waste. That's another criminal waste of the, the part behind it. If you look at the wardrobe versus the, the piece next to it, it is considerably deeper. So we thought that this could be used as a potential office or dressing room space. So we've installed a light to make it more usable. It's, it's quite tight, it's only about 1.2 meters wide, but it is definitely big enough to be able to put a desk or a dressing table in this space. Probably we'd put the desk on this side here, so you'd have the desk here and your chair where the full height section is, but you would have the ability to work from home here, to have a dressing table, to get ready, anything you want to. It's just a good use of a small, awkward space but it's it's making it part of the room and making it something that's an, a, an interesting feature so we designed this alongside the wardrobe and the door to the room to make sure we were maximizing every single inch so you know you could do something different with this but don't don't ever agree with the builder to just run the wall straight across it's easy for builders to be able to just do things that are square, to just square it off and say, job done. But if we'd have lost this space, look at how much space in that wardrobe and in here there is that we could potentially have just never had available to us. Turning to the eaves, so this is the part of the room, this is the front of the house where the, room, the roof slopes down and you need to install a wall. So we've got ours here at about a meter high. So it's about a meter from the floor. And if we step all the way back, you could, in, you could, we could put the, the bed in this room. So the bed could sit between these two cupboards that have the headboard here, or we could have it in the corner, or it might come off this wall. But either way, um, you can still use this space up to this wall. Behind that wall, there's a lot of valuable space. And again, builders, it's easier for builders to just be able to square this wall off, not have any doors and just uh, paint over it. Don't ever agree to that. Make sure you include some cupboards and some cupboard doors. So we put two sets of doors to make it easier because this is a very long space. It's about six meters from one side to the other. 
So it's too long to put one door in because it's, you know, you'd be crawling a long way to get things at the far end. So we put two doors in and we also split the doors in half. So you can see there's, there's two separate doors. Again, to make it easier, it makes the doors smaller so they're easier to swing open. They don't have to has, have, some, have so much room on the floor. And also you only need to open one door to get in to just pop something in there. So it just makes it easier to access. And also design wise, you know, it makes it look more uh, designed and more upmarket. So we put two doors in. One of the critical things is to make sure that the floor level inside the eaves is the same height as the rest of the room because it again it's easier for builders not to to carry the floor on into the eaves and that means that when you put things in the cupboard they drop down they're hard to get out it's more awkward to use the space so don't agree to that have the floor level continue all the way and then the other tip is to have the same finish so you can see here we've got wooden floor if we go back to the wardrobe we carried that wooden floor on into the wardrobe so it feels part of the room We've done the same with the skirting board. You can see the skirting board around the room carries on into the wardrobe and makes it more finished. So if we have a look in this eaves cupboard, we can see the same features. So the floor carries on through as one continuous floor. And what that does, it makes the whole space feel bigger. It makes that cupboard look and feel part of the room. So it's a great feature, but it also is easier to use because you can just crawl in and out very easily. We've done the same with the skirting board. The skirting board in here carries on all the way around the cupboard. So that means it just is easier to use, it's more hard wearing. You can see here we've stored some wood. If we're, if we're banging that wood against the skirting board it will be fine. If it was just plasterboard it could, it could damage that plasterboard and then it becomes more difficult to manage. And we've also plastered the ceiling in here. So we've plastered and painted it so that it looks like ceiling. So it's a nice finish. We haven't done that on this back wall because there's no point, you can't, you can't see it unless you're in the cupboard. The other thing we've done is put some lights in here, which makes it much easier to use because it's all nice and bright and illuminated. So it just feels like a great space, but look at how much additional storage we've got in here. It is massive. So it's six meters long, it's over a meter deep, and the height of it, you could easily store all your suitcases and your Christmas trees and all your old photographs and memories and whatever it is you need to put in here, all storable. So, and then we'll just go over to the other cupboard, same idea, and it's, you know, we've just seen this, but we just look down the end, you, you get a feeling for how big this space is, it really is massive and it would be criminal not to be using this space for storage this is the sort of area that you lose when you when you do develop your loft so you have to make sure you include the storage for that add on the extra space we've got here and the wardrobe and we've really got a lot of usable storage space now let's have a quick look around the rest of the room the other things that we've done so here where this wardrobe was built we could easily have just squared the room off and made the, you, the ensuite bathroom the same level. And that's what the builder wanted to do. It was easier for him to just carry the wall on all the way across here. But we only needed 1.5 meters for the ensuite bathroom. So we've stepped it back. And the reason we've done that is then, as the wall is slightly further back here, it gives us more space between this wall and the window where we can now install a desk or some drawers or a wardrobe or something. It gives you more options. If it was further forward, if this, if this wall carried on at the same, so if we look at the flooring, where this flooring is here, this, this board, we have lost these two boards behind the, you, the, the ensuite bathroom. It just would have made it more difficult to put a wardrobe in there or a desk or drawers. So you have to maximize the space. And the same over here. We've got chimney breast, and this chimney breast has been boxed in with the plasterboard. You can see in all of the videos how we did that. And at the time, the builder said, well, let's just square that wall all the way across, which would have been easier. But we said, no, let's, let's step it back. So we've got here 
probably about 200, there's about 200 millimetres here. And what that's done, stepping it back, is it means that we've now got, between the back wall and the window, so this section here, is about 700 millimetres, which means we could put a double wardrobe into this space now. So if we'd have squared the wall off, we wouldn't have been able to do that. It would be too small. But now we can put a double wardrobe in there. So you have to think of all where the furniture is going to go and every single square inch makes a difference. Let's have a look in the bathroom because we've done some built-in storage in here as well. So we've got a relatively small ensuite, but it's, it's nicely finished. So we've got a big, big walk-in shower. We've got the, the vanity unit and the toilet. And, and we've got the, uh, the built-in radiator. So in here, in the shower area, we had, it's 1.5 meters this bathroom from wall to wall. This shower is 1.2 meters, which is a big shower. So, you know, it's a luxurious shower. We've got sliding doors again, because it's easier, because you don't have to worry about the doors swinging and hitting the furniture, how you get in and out. But the 1.2 meters left us with 300 millimeters at this end, which you can see here, we've boxed in and tiled. So this section allowed us to put a shaver socket and some storage up here. But more excitingly, in the shower itself, we've utilized that 300 millimeter deep space to build two storage areas. So this first one here, is for all of the things that you'll need to use in the shower, all your shampoos and shower gel and conditioner, anything else that you want. So it's a really handy, useful storage area. It's right above the shower control, so very easy to use. And then we built a very small section of bugs, about 150 mil high, so in here, which we thought would be nice design feature for um, some aesthetic value. So you could put some plants or candles or something quite nice and neat just to dress the bathroom, make it look a more homely uh, and, and a nice sort of place to live. And we put three lights in there as well. And these are decking lights, so they're waterproof. Uh, usually go outside, but they're quite small, but they make it a difference at night, and give that nice illumination, really nice feature. So we've got quite a bit of storage here. And then with the sink, we could have just installed a standard sink, but we've gone for a built-in vanity unit, which has a cupboard beneath it. So this comes as you buy this uh, online, we bought it, and you fit it in, it's got a nice modern stylish resin sink. But underneath here, built into it, you've got quite a lot of additional storage. So you'll be able to put all the things you don't want on display. So up here, you can have all your nice shampoos and everything else. Down here, you can put bleach and any cleaning equipment and anything else that you, you want to store in here. So really, really useful and essential in any new loft conversion because you need places to store stuff. Just one final bit here. We boxed in the soil pipe. So we've got a nice little shelf down here next to the toilet. It's quite discreet. We've also got a little bit of space here. So you could put some bleach or whatever it is that you want uh, in there. Other things done in this room in terms of being able to store things and, and put things in. We made sure that we built a windowsill. So we've actually tiled this. So quite a deep windowsill. So again, you can put something decorative on here. You could put uh, some plants or you know just something, uh, some candles again or something. Uh, that just makes the room feel more homely. So all these little design, design features, really important. Definitely, definitely storage is a big, big issue when you're designing your loft. So make sure that you design as much of the space as you can to what you need and don't ever let the builder just square things off and just box things over because it's easier for him. You're gonna to have to live here. You need the extra storage. So make sure you're always thinking about every square inch. Until the next time, thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much. Bye.